Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at, and I'm here with you. Yes, it's another episode of DJ Roundtable, and hopefully you are enjoying yourself. And we have actually a couple guests today. As always, we like to see uh, people coming in here. And we want to thank you for stopping by, coming in here today, and coming in here tonight, and watching the show. And as always, we look forward to the comments down in the comment section. So please don't be afraid to say anything to anyone or ask a question. But we do have a couple guests here. Uh, first thing first, I have to say um, I have my lovely wife, a.k.a. the boss, a.k.a. the T in TBM, Tracy, which you've heard me talk about her before uh, many times. And it's always great to have her. I get to see her, and she always uh, talks to me about the show afterwards and about some topics and stuff like, hey, why don't you ask this or ask that? She always has great insight and uh, henceforth being married 25 years to this young lady right here. Um, even though uh, I may uh, sometimes not agree with her, at the end of the day, she is right. And as a husband, she's always right. I'm the one who's always wrong. So, uh, And then I'm, I'm also honored to have here a great wedding coordinator I deal with, and we've dealt with plenty of times, uh, Danica. And we've actually worked with her and her husband and her staff and uh, Danica has been doing coordination for quite a while. I'll let her talk about her stuff in a second or two. But I want to congratulate her because now she's full-time as a coordinator. So she's an event, special event coordinator and wedding coordinator. And we've had the pleasure of working with her many, many times. And it's always great working with a professional. So I know some DJs out there always, you know, uh, talk about, you know, wedding coordinators not doing this, not doing that. And I've said before in the show, and I'll say it again, you probably not worked with a good wedding coordinator. And I happen to have a good wedding coordinator. And if Danica's not there, if she's not there, <laughs> I have another wedding coordinator here. Because uh, Tracy has a coordination time management side of things. So she does the day of coordination. But Danica will do a whole entire planning of a special event from apples to oranges and everything in between. So Danica, please explain to everyone a little bit about your business and what you do and all the fun things you have and uh, what the exciting things are going out there in Rockford. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, buddy, for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to join everyone today and see some familiar faces and meet some new ones. Um, so I own Weddings by Danica. It is a wedding planning and coordination company based in my hometown of Rockford, Illinois. Um, I started doing this about six years ago after about 10 years that I had in the nonprofit slash special events industry where I was planning things like um, the Walk 10 Alzheimer's or the International Family Therapy Association Annual Conference. Um, and when I got engaged, I naturally planned my own wedding and I just fell in love with the whole wedding industry, the community surrounding all of it. And I thought, might as well try it out. <laughs> uh, my first wedding I booked, um, just some person I met online and at her wedding, I ended up booking two of her bridesmaids and that's when I went, okay, I think I should be doing this. Um, so ever since then, I've just loved being a part of the wedding industry. And like Buddy was saying, just last month, I decided to take that scary, scary leap and decide to do wedding planning full time. Um, so as of right now, I am really just trying to focus on weddings. We're actually getting ready to start adding destination weddings and honeymoon planning into our repertoire. Um, so really excited to see kind of what happens with that. Hopefully we'll be able to do some more traveling. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a little bit about myself. Um, we do have a team of five of us, so I never do weddings alone. Um, we kind of structure all of our packages, so we always have two people there. And that's definitely something that I think sets me apart from some of the other coordinators in the area because it's just a team of one or you only have that one person on site. So, yeah. And that's the thing is that working with uh, you in the past, uh, a couple of really quick things. You can always tell where she's at because she has these leopard uh, <laughs> pants on to let you know where she's at. She wears these pants not as a, as a fashion, but she's a fascist diva. It's not just that. It's also to tell you, you can just look in a second and see exactly where she's at. You have a question, you can go to her. Now, the person to my side right here, to my left, happens to also be 
a uh, BFF with her on day of this of the wedding. So she's <laughs> always over there going, "What what do we need to do? How can we help? How, what can we uh, do things?" And that's one of the things is that having that relationship with a coordinator or a planner, I feel is very important, especially day of. And you're trying to, you know, as DJs, we're trying to cover everything and do everything. But also we want to make sure that T's cross, I's dotted. And also, we also want to make sure we're doing the right things that the customers ask for. Now, sometimes customers will tell a DJ one thing and then tell the coordinator a whole another thing. And then they may go to Danica and go, Danica, we want everything to be purple and green. And they come to us, oh, no, I like blue and pink, you know, for lighting. And it's like, well, that's not what you're telling her. So this is one of the things that communication is huge. And that's one of the things you always should communicate with those wedding coordinators or wedding planners or event planners. If you're doing a corporate gig, if you're doing anything. The other thing also, one really quick side note, Danica is actually fostering some little kittens. So if you're in the Rockford area, <laughs> she is actually uh, part of a little rescue group there and has some kittens. And I'm going to link, I'm going to link down below her information. If you're in a Rockford area and you have a question about want to adopt a little kitten, a cute little baby kitten, her information is down below. You can contact her and get more information about it. Or if you want to contact her for an event, again, I'm going to put her social media and so forth down there. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you do me a favor. Click the like button. Make sure you click the subscribe button. Check the bell icon. Make sure you get all the alerts. This goes live on Mondays at noon on YouTube. And, of course, we're here on Tuesday nights on Twitch at 8 o'clock Central Time. And all times are in Central because I'm in Chicago, and that's what time I go by, so Central Time. The other thing also, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. As always, it's great having you here. So first thing first, I oh, I see a tail. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to start <laughs> with Taylor. Uh, Taylor also has a, uh, not just a DJ, but she also does decorations. She also does some coordination. She also does, you know, a little bit more than just a standard DJ as far as uh, ambience of a event. So lighting and so forth and so on. They have chandeliers. They have a bunch of stuff in, and I'm sure that if you had a wedding down at, let's say, uh, in the South Suburbs like we've done before, she's a person you can uh, connect with to get that kind of stuff and get some decor as well as music. Uh, Taylor, you have any questions this evening for Danica that you love to ask a wedding coordinator or someone else who deals with weddings that uh, maybe you ran into or you have a question about something? So, yeah, um, I when I first started out, I was offering coordinating without my DJ services, but now I kind of, if you're going to hire me as your DJ, like I'm going to coordinate. I won't just coordinate as a service by itself because I always have a hard time communicating well with the DJs. They always seem very resistant and I'm always like, well, you know, I'm one to try to talk to me. We'll get through this. Um, so how do you deal with that? Dealing with the other vendors when they're like super resistant and just don't want to work with you <laughs> oh man that's always a fun challenge um yeah. something that i've really learned over the years taylor is as soon as i find out who those vendors are i reach out right away um and that's something i've started really focusing on recently because if they're aware that i'm you know part of this at the beginning then they try to include me a little bit more or i try to include them a little bit more and it kind of helps bridge that communication gap a little bit because it just opens those doors so much early. Um, and I always try to go up to them day of, like, I don't care if they have been unresponsive or anything, and I'm still going to go up and I'm going to put on the biggest smile on my face, even if I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to scream right now. And I'm going to go and just try to be as professional as possible and just be like, all right, I just need to confirm these details. Like, mm -hmm then I'll, you know, let you do your job kind of thing because I'm just here to, you know, bring all the pieces together. So it's mm. always a challenge. <laughs> and there's always yeah. going to be those people that just aren't your cup of tea, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Um, I usually start reaching out about six weeks before the wedding to vendors. What do you usually do? Is it like how far out do you like to? Yeah, 
Yeah. So uh, when I initially reach out, it's just a basic, like, hi, I'm Danica. I'll be the wedding coordinator. Let me know if there's anything like you need from our clients by a certain Mm -hmm. point. And then when I'm starting to set the timeline, I usually start reaching out to vendors about two months prior um, because I'm the one that's working with them throughout the process. So I'm trying to just at that point compile information and then get a rough copy of the timeline to the other vendors before you guys start meeting with them. So you at least have kind of like a blueprint of something to go off of and it just helps your process, hopefully. That's my whole goal at least. (laughs) And that's one of the things that when you're looking at people and you're looking at vendors, it's it's a hard thing because you wanna do the right thing. You wanna do, things you need for your client because your client is your goal and you want to have those reviews. You want to be known as a person to go to, but when you deal with other vendors, it could be like we deal with a photographer who's not that, you know, in tune what's going on or a videographer or a catering company or a venue. And, you know, we just had a wedding this past weekend, (laughs) excuse me, Um, the cake cutting, uh, the, they forgot to put a, a plate down and a fork down where the cake was being played. Things happen. Accidents happen. And the thing is that little things like that, Tracy ran over real quick, grabbed the plate, grabbed the fork, brought it over. Um, and she walked a couple through cutting of the cake. And we've done it, you know, tons of times before. But the thing is that, you know, sometimes, you know, you have to fill those gaps in as a vendor. And sometimes those vendors you know, they were busy. They had two things going at the same time. They were kind of short staffed, like a lot of restaurants are and uh, venues. And all you do is adapt and overcome. But that communication is key. And uh, the staff there was very communicative with us. And we were, it was great. A little mistake like that, no big deal. Two second fix, done or with. Uh, versus, you know, sometimes, again, the difficult vendor, is, I'm sure, is uh, something that uh, Danica pulls her hair out. What about you, Tracy? Do you, uh, <laughs> what do you think of uh, difficult vendors? Yeah, I mean, I had, uh, we had a, a officiant, well, he was a relative acting as an officiant, and I walked over and I said, okay, I'm going to need you to come into this room in about 15 minutes so we can test your microphone, and I have never been spoken to the way that he spoke to me, <laughs> and then he tried to tell me that he was more important than the clients were, which just completely floored me. I've never had that happen before either. Um, we worked it out, but, uh, it was definitely a a learning moment. I've never run into that. I don't know, Danica, have you ever run into anything like that with like an officiant? Oh gosh. I've had officiants that are just very set in their ways and think that their way to do things is the best way. Um, and I just, you know, at that point, let them do their thing. They only have a 30 minute portion of the day in my eyes that, I'm just going to not argue. <laughs> yeah, he the, the couple didn't want to be mic'd, and they didn't want him oh. to be mic'd, and he wanted a handheld mic, and I was like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. But we might Yeah, at that point, I just forget conveniently to put the mic up there and go on. <laughs> now, again, Tracy talked to him, and Tracy said, hey, you know what? We're going to do a lapel mic on you. And then we, we did real lapel mic, the groom. And it's, you know, kept this volume down a little lower. Because, again, he, their couple was a shyer couple. Yeah. And they didn't want to spotlight on them. Yeah. And so, again, we we adjusted. They, people could still hear them. But, again, it wasn't really super focused on them. And I wanted to adjust the volume down a little bit. So that way it wasn't he didn't feel like the spotlight was on him as the groom or the bride and her. It was more like a little bit more, like, I could say a gorilla sound kind of, you know, that that like you're hitting them, but you're not hitting them. So people could hear it, but not hear it, you know. And it's, it's, it's stuff like that you got to try and do. So I'm going to go out to California to Matt. Matt uh, is yeah. driving around uh, beautiful, sunny Southern <laughs> California out there in Orange County. And, it's always uh, sunny. Yeah, it's always sunny out there. Well, you're in a desert, dude. <laughs> um, so do you have a question? Because I know California has uniqueness. A lot of venues require uh uh coordinators do you have a question for our wedding coordinator you like to have answered tonight um one sec um well i mean we just implemented a policy where we do not we won't dj your wedding unless there's a professional coordinator there um we had a 
one of my associates, CJ Unstoppable, was doing a wedding this weekend, and it was a disaster because there was no coordinator. And so this photographer who arrived drunk was trying to coordinate everything and yelling at people. And, you know, he basically complained that he was only getting paid $1,500 and he's not going to give him any edited photos and he'll eat when it's his time to eat. And I, I yeah, his name was Gucci, by the way. So that's Gucci. Did, uh, wow. Gucci. Yeah. Gucci. Yeah. So uh, like, you know, like the first. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, yeah. And it was, it, it's not even like, I mean, we charged him like a full price too. So I don't know, you know, when, after he left, everything was fine. But like, while he was there, it was just a nightmare. So like, as a coordinator, how do you, have you ever had to deal with just horrible vendors like that? Like the couple, <laughs> basically like the couple booking somebody because they're on a budget, but they book somebody that's just not professional and has never really done a wedding and doesn't know what to do. Like, I mean, how much, how much handholding are you willing to do to go out of your way to like help them out versus just kind of let this person, you know, yeah. dig their own grave? <laughs> yeah. So um, I've had a few instances where that's happened and it's, for me, it's always a friend of a friend mm -hmm. that gets hired to do this wedding or someone who's not a professional. So I now have it in my contract. I will not work with a friend vendor. It needs to be someone that is like insured. They own a business, all that kind of stuff, because I don't want to put myself or my clients through that. Um, but one of the big things that I focus on is really, you know, putting our clients needs first. So if there is a vendor who's acting some type of way, I'm going to pull that vendor and I'm going to have a talk with them. And if that vendor becomes a little rowdy, which has unfortunately happened once, I'm going to go find the biggest guy that is a guest or a bridal party member. And I'm going to pull them over with me. Luckily, the one time I've had to do that, he was ex-military. So it really handled that situation nicely. Um, but Unfortunately, it happens. There's always going to be someone who thinks they're better than something, in that case, the photographer. Mm -hmm. And you just have to kind of go that extra mile for your clients to make sure that their wedding's not being ruined by someone who's misbehaving. Right. And my thing is, like, if you undercharge the couple, like, that's on you. Just go out there yeah. and do a great job. I've had I've had weddings where like I get there and I see how over the top it is and see how much they were trying to nickel and dime me. And I'm like, you know, I'm a little salty about it at first, but at the end of the day, like I'm there to give them the best show possible and hopefully get a tip to make up for it. And if not, yeah, on me for for taking it. So and you uh, don't know who they know. Like the, if their right. wedding has a small budget, but their cousin maybe I don't know Barack Obama's cousin, and they have a three hundred thousand dollar budget for their upcoming wedding like just do your best okay. and hopefully karma will treat you right exactly hopefully it works out taylor i gotta ask you because again you've done some coordination have you run into a uh vendor being unruly i know you said some vendors that have not been nice to you but have you run into a vendor like that who was uh drunk at your um drunk at your uh event you know what? No, I've actually never had that happen. <clears throat> never like drunk and unruly, just usually really rude and just they think they know better, which maybe they do. I'm a little bit of a control freak and I like things to flow a certain way, but um, never had them drunk and unruly yet. I don't want that to happen. I don't know how I'll handle it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I got turned to my other half because we have run into we that. Did, yeah, we and you want to tell the story <laughs> we did we had a, a drunk uh photographer and we were getting ready to do the first dance and so i walked over to the table and i said we're doing the first dance after this song and he was like okay okay and then the couple is out on the dance floor and the photographer's still not there so i walked over again and said okay we're ready for you like you've got to get your lights and stuff set up come on over okay okay so then we're still standing there waiting. He's still not coming. So I walk over to Buddy and I said, you need to call him out. Like, you need to call him out to the dance floor. So Buddy calls him out to the dance floor. He stands up. He takes a drink of, I don't know what it was. It was a mixed drink. Downs it. Then grabs his glass of wine. Downs that. And then goes over to take the pictures in front of the bride and groom. So we're all standing there like, I cannot believe you just did that. <laughs> 
I, I think Brentley wants to chime in on this one. <laughs> he, Brentley being up there in lacrosse. Now, here, here's the thing with, with Brentley. We love him, and we know that uh, he loves uh, lacrosse being on uh, Code Blue Cam on YouTube. We always talk about this and the craziness. One of the strongest towns in America. It's <laughs> it, 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 here. It's it's the craziness up there. So I got to hear from you, dude. Uh, what the, what crazy photographer, videographer, wedding corner, whatever have you run into up there in uh, lacrosse? You know, there was. I've gotten to work with a lot of really great vendors, and luckily, because I'm at you know the the golden venues I'm at, as I like to call them, and don't stray away from them. Every one of them has a coordinator, somebody that's you know holding your hand just as much as you're holding theirs throughout the course of the entire day. So whenever you're ready to do something. I'm going to them. Hey, are you ready? We're ready. Okay, cool. Now let me go tell everybody else. But there is one coordinator, and I, you know, I've forgotten her name, that it was like pulling teeth to actually get her to do something. Hey, we want to do first dances now. Great. I'll get the music ready. You go get the couple. And the couple, I, I'm st I, I wound up staring at her. Like, is there something we're missing here? You go get couple. I play music. You're the coordinator. I'm not. And at that point in the day, I was now, because there were so many instances that had gotten me to that point, I'm like, I'm throwing this all back on you. I am done and running around trying to do X, Y, and Z, especially when we're about to start dances. I have tracks to cue. I want to make sure my notes are correct. One, the millionth time before I start them, because how paranoid I can get, the OCD thing in me, it's like, okay, we're good. But yeah, I finally had to, you know, look at her and do the, okay. And the little finger walking thing to go get them. And then it couldn't have been more than five minutes after dances. Okay, have a great night. What? It is seven o'clock and you're leaving. I'm sure they don't have you paid until seven. You're probably supposed to be there until nine, ten o'clock after the caterers leave. Didn't even do that. So, yeah, there was, there's been one like that. And so when I know I'm working with a coordinator, I haven't. As soon as I see that pop up in my sheet, there, there's an immediate, hey, how are you? I've never worked with you, blah, 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 blah. This is a touching base. And then when it comes to my week's planning, especially if I haven't worked with them, like when I finally gotten the timeline from the photographer so I can work and see what they've got as compared to our CRM, just so I'd be like, hey, these don't match up. Are you going? And, you know, like something like Sunset Photos. I assume you're going out at this time for sunsets. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. So we had that chance to work together before that and make sure everything is on par, on key before we walk in the door. But, and again, there's vendors I've worked with in that same boat who are just God awful. And being in lacrosse, you know, out, you know in addition to the plethora of $500 DJs, we have a plethora of $1,000 or less photographers. And there's one who I, 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 I'm I thankful I don't remember her name because I wouldn't want to call her out right now. But on, on like I looked at her social media page after working with her for about maybe 10 minutes. I'm like, wow, your bedside manner is terrible. <laughs> and this is after I watched her. Rather, we were at Celebrations on the River. And for the first look picture for dad to daughter, bride that is, she decided to do it on the gravel trail in the parking lot. And I'm like, wait a minute. You go 100 feet to our right and you have the river. What? Something is not right here. <laughs> and so by the time I'd gotten to look at her social page, I see uh, in every post she puts, Facebook ruins images. Facebook ruins images. And then a post I got a few down that... If I don't have your deposit, I'm not your photographer. Whoa, okay. Now I know who we're working with here today. At that point, I just kind of said, okay, what's the coordinator celebrations? Showed her the social media page because I want her to be on the same page as I am. I'm like, we're going to take over now, and she's just going to do as we tell her because this is going poorly. Immediately after that point, everything went fine. Like the, the, the coordinator at celebrations was like, we're going to do it this way. Not your way from here on out. Next pictures were done over by the path, over by the river, and everything played. In. But yeah, you I'm sure you see the plethora of like is I DJ Dumb A 
as I like to call him, <laughs> and that whole category of DJs who and don't think they're you know think it doesn't stink from them, think they know everything, all of that, uh, you know, in every v- different vendor down, you know, I mean, and I don't know how you tolerate it all. I mean, I know how I tolerate it, but that's besides the point. The club gigs really take care of, although I, I never thought I'd say this. And Tommy, uh, after being pretty much five and a half, six months in just clubs with only a, maybe 10 weddings, I'm ready to go back to weddings. I'm over it this year. I am done. Like the stupidity, ego, and all the crap that has been going on around, you know, a bunch of the venues I'm at. Uh, you know, you guys can have your fun over the summer. I'll come back in fall when you grow up. But um, it's wedding season. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and one of the things also to let you guys out there watching, and again, you're watching. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, one of the things also uh, to let you know, DJ Brantley has worked with Danica before. He had the yeah. privilege of working with her previously. And we were talking a little before you came in here. Um, and like she was excited to see you again. She's like, she thought she worked with you in 2020. Uh, yeah, she, you know, she early in my career, <laughs> I, can, I can actually tell you the venue, which was the Swan Barn Door in Wisconsin. That's right. <laughs> and I wound up having to do the ceremony on the fly because, if you remember correctly, ceremony musician became late social hour musician. And I'm like, and they'd already told me their songs in case anything went wrong, so I had them ready to go. But he, like, he like just didn't, they didn't show up. He, he strolls in after the ceremony, starts setting up, and I'm already playing social hour music because he's not there. For those who can't watch this and listen to this on podcasts, Tracy has her mouth open right now, like, "Oh my god!" Uh, <laughs> it was yeah. a very interesting wedding. <laughs> I can't even believe that. Yeah, I'm this, at, this is fun. Well, I'm also looking at musicians set up. He's got cables dangling everywhere. He's got his MIDI pad thing with crap hanging out of it. I'm like, do you need some cable ties or anything? No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. And then the first thing I see him do is sit down with a drink as he's starting to play. I can remember it was like a highball glass. It was probably like a G&T or something similar. But I'm like, oh, wow. We're really here already. It's 4.30 in the afternoon. You're late. Good job. Okay. You, you got to love that. We got a question from uh, Fred, the, go- uh, the godson. Uh, how do you handle bridezillas? Must be very common in your line of work. When they are stressing over every detail, do you respond and have meetings with the same level of detail, or do you try to approach them in a more laid-back approach to balance them out and not feed into the obsession with every small detail? Oh, man. <clears throat> I think with that, it's all about managing expectations. So if a bride is stressing over trying to remember every detail, then what can I do to help make sure they're remembering those details? So I have a lot of spreadsheets I've created over the years that we provide our clients to help them keep track of everything, because that's exactly what I've noticed. The ones that are getting stressed out, they're not keeping track of everything in one area. They have like seven different spreadsheets that they're doing and the DJ portal and the photographer portal and all this stuff. And they're just like completely overwhelmed and can't narrow it down and focus on one thing at a time. So I do allow our clients, they have unlimited text and email. um, So they can reach out with any little question. And I encourage them to reach out with any little question because it's also their first time planning a wedding. I do at least 30 of these a year, so I don't expect them to know everything. So I think approaching it that way too, it's not 70 questions at once. It's one little question here and there, and I can really guide them to those next steps that are needed as well. And that's that's one of the things like we when we talk to clients, it's the same thing. And then I'm sure everyone here, when they talk to clients, um, you know, they say the same thing. They, I do so many weddings a year, it could be five, it could be 25, 105, whatever. I do these so many weddings a year. I know what I'm looking for, what to make your wedding successful versus you have an ID in your head that may or may not play out well. And the next person I got to go to who knows uh, weddings and does a little bit of everything uh, is Mr. Dixon over there in the great state of Ohio. Uh, I know, Dwayne, you, you have many years of experience being a teacher and I probably have to deal with difficult students. Um, ask you, uh, on this one, have you run into some dis- difficult, uh, uh, other vendors when you're working at a gig or 
Um, do you have a uh, question for uh, Danica here that she can answer? You know, it's asked the uh, wedding coordinator a question, and you can ask. There's there technically there's three of them here, so you can ask anyone to three a question. <laughs> no, I was trying to think of a question because I really don't have one, and then because before I got into like the wedding um part, the, all the weddings I've been to, we had court um, coordinators. But once I became a DJ, it's like I didn't realize the DJ did all the planning and the timelines because the weddings I went to previously, it was like they just got a list of what songs to play and that, and that was it. But there was one wedding that I had where um, a timeline was made, but a timeline was just something that was on paper. So they never stuck to the timeline. It threw everything off. And then what especially when it came down to the pictures, you know, in between the ceremony. And now you have people waiting, especially the um the caterers. So how do you, it's like at that time in my doing weddings, I didn't, since I was fairly new, I didn't know how, how much of a push I should be as far as being anal to the timeline and then dealing with all the other vendors who's waiting on them that's on a, you know, a schedule. So how do you, like, what kind of, where do you find the area to be, like, forceful, but also, you know, being yeah. able to. Um... Yeah, I always remind photographers if they are taking some extra time doing family photos or things between ceremony and reception, that catering also has a job to do. Um, people don't want to eat cold food. And that's really what people are going to remember about your wedding day is the entertainment and the food. Um, so we are very involved in the family photo process, Buddy and Tracy, I don't know if you've ever seen us yeah, handling you are. the family photos. You really are, which, but I think <laughs> yes. that's a good thing because you help them stay on track. Like yeah. run, when you're not there, I've run in, they can get <laughs> off track because they have like an artistic vision about something that they see and I get it, but you know, similar to you, like I, I say, you know, you're standing between everybody being hangry. So if you don't want, you know, 150 people being mad at you because you're delaying their dinner, you know, you need to hurry things along. Yeah. And I always encourage them if they have like family groupings of like more than 15, I always encourage them during our meetings, like let's consider doing this right before open dance, like call everyone out on the dance floor and do a group photo because it's so much easier because if you have more than 15 people, half of them went to the bar already and I'm yep. not getting them back in this room. Yep. So I've also just learned to accept that. <laughs> well, you you know, and Tracy knows and Taylor knows and everyone here should, knows that, you know, wedding parties become like children. They see something shiny, they go after it. It's like a bunch of little puppies. They hear some jingle and they go running off to wherever it is. Oh, look, it's it's the bar's open. Ah, I gotta get my drink on. Like they never drank before in their lives and they're never <laughs> going to drink again. Or they think they're they're in beautiful uh, La Crosse, Wisconsin and just constantly drinking, you know. <laughs> hey, you can't start day drinking unless you start when you get it up. There you go. I, I guess that's that's the thing. That's 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 Lacrosse's new uh, slogan now. <laughs> but, I think it's always been something like that up here. I mean, honestly, I don't think I'd ever see day drinking like I had until I moved here. Every Saturday after, like when I get out of bed after a club gig, I'll get up by like you know eleven o'clock, go get coffee, take the kid out, and everybody's already at the bar, and the bars are busy Saturday afternoon, like busy, busy. That's crazy. So, Mr. Dixon, have you uh, run into a vendor that uh, has been less than professional with you? Uh, so far, I've been lucky to not have any of those issues yet. You're blessed, sir. You're very blessed. <laughs> We've been lucky, too. Like, I would not have... None of our brides, I would say, have been bridezillas. I mean, we had the one, but she only got that way after she'd been drinking a lot. So, I think the the alcohol had more of effect on her the adult beverages than, yeah uh, than <laughs> anything else but like that's one of the things i love when we work with danica is we get a timeline and if i'm you know i'll make a timeline if if we don't have a, a wedding coordinator but i stick to that timeline like as close as i can to that time because again i don't want to be the one responsible for dinner getting ruined because something went over and you know was late and Danica's worked with us enough times. She knows that um, when Tracy says a certain time, she comes run over to me and says, 
you know, we need to do this now, do this, do that. She knows it's going to be done like that. That's a great thing because you have you have reliance upon us. We have control of the sound, and we can you know inform people this is going on, that's going on, and keep things moving along. I'm going to go over to uh, beautiful North Carolina and go to uh, Jeff there. Who again does what Angel does? Other special events, does uh, school functions, and I know that uh, he may have a good question for you, uh, Jeff. You have a good question for our coordinator this evening. Yeah, I actually got a, a scenario. <laughs> I've got a um, an upcoming wedding, which I received a timeline for, um, and I noticed something, uh, I pulled it up here. I'll, re I'll read this to you, Danica, and see what you think of this. 7.45 p.m., the DJ will ask all guests line up for the sparkler exit. While the bride and groom will enjoy a final dance while the guests are lining up for the exit. 7.45. See anything um, wrong there? They're doing their final dance at 7.45? It's a very early ending. Are they like well, it's, a, it's an eight o'clock. Eight o'clock like exit. Staging everything to get the pictures or something, or so, well, here was my question that I threw out to them uh, to the bride, and I think she got with the coordinator and changed it. My question was, okay, so we're going to ask the guests to get up while you're doing your final dance, your last dance might be a little disruptive. I'm not going to tell you not to do it, but I'm just going to, worst case scenario, you're enjoying your beautiful last dance and everybody's getting up and sliding chairs and talking and asking which way do we go. It's just, you know, it's a disaster. So, you know, my, my question to them is, you know, what do you, how do you want to do that? And so have you ever, do you ever like, pick things like that and and try to, you know, as a DJ, I know from sound that there's going to be problems there. So as a coordinator, do you try to like prevent those things from happening? Do you see those things in advance? So the last chance I've seen becoming more and more popular because of social media. Um, so I definitely think that's going to be something that we're all going to have to learn how to work around because- Are you talking like it. the private last trends. dance? Yes. Yeah, yeah, it I sounds like it. they're sending no. everyone out somewhere and keeping the couple. Um, I see a lot of issues with it because at that point in the night, usually you're down to one photographer. What are they taking photos of? The sparklers you have or your last all. dance? Yeah, and if they're coming back in, if it's like post, I hate seeing them in the middle of the night because if it's post and all your guests are leaving after because they think it's done or they're like, oh, this is a great moment to leave so then after that everything just quiets down so i like to explain the situations as a coordinator like okay if you want this this is what it's going to realistically look like and it goes back to that expectation setting so jeff i'd, I'd even talk to them like yeah we can definitely do that this is what it's going to look like i'm going to give you this big picture do you still want to do that because uh, so many people they just don't realize because it's their only wedding or event they've ever planned we always yeah. do the offer the private dance, but like we'll do like the last group dance of the night. They pick the song. It's like 11 o'clock. Then we're like, OK, as people are leaving, we give them their moment at the end of the night. And they usually like it. But yeah, right at the end of the night, I wouldn't do it at 745. Yeah, yeah, we've but, done that. We well, did this, something this similar is to you. eight o'clock out. It's a hard oh, out, it's at, eight out at eight o'clock because uh, of the venue. Um, uh, but no, what the, the, the final we got back from the bride was they nixed the uh, last dance and put the emphasis on the exit. So, and, and that's fine. But, you know, I guess it, it was, um, if I hadn't raised that question, you know, I can just see, you know, a disaster happening. So, <laughs> Yeah. That's too many moving parts. Like, yeah, one or the other. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have, we've had um, couples, and I'm sure you guys run into it that what the send off at a certain time with sparkler send off because it's dark out and, they, and you get everyone outside and you're quiet at a dance floor and they go do the sparkler send off and then everybody comes back in and it takes a few minutes and it's that five minutes of, of video and those beautiful pictures takes basically a half hour, at least a half hour away from the dance floor 
because it takes 10, 15 minutes to set everything up. It takes another five or six minutes to get everyone in, gets everyone to get back into it. But that's if you get everyone in, like Bianca yeah. was saying. Or people Sometimes leave. Sometimes people leave right after that. So, yeah. Um, we have another question. Um, do you find it disruptive when the DJ has the client write a timeline in their DJ planning software or sheet? Does it cause conflict or ever contradict the one you've created and cause issues for you? So I am very much different than other wedding coordinators because I don't feel it is my job to tell you how to do your job. If you guys as DJs create a timeline, my job is to incorporate that timeline into the rest of the wedding day. I'm not going to come in and be like, all right, Tracy and buddy, screw whatever you have figured out. This is what I want to see you do today. Because that's just, it's not going to work realistically. So I'm very much someone like, I'm going to try to make it work. If a DJ has a portal, I always ask our client to ask that DJ if they can add us to it. But that's also why I like to reach out early. Um, I know like when I work with the two of you, like we're going to be comparing notes. Um, so it's even if we have something that's off, we're going to fix it right then and there. Um, but a lot of it, I think it's just that communication piece. Like if you're working on things with your client, that's great. As long as I eventually learn about it. And then that's that's an important thing. Here's a here's a question I ran into today on social media. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys seen it on uh, one of the DJ forums, but a, uh, a event planner planned a wedding. They had the dance floor. So picture this: you have a dance floor in the middle, standard dance floor, rectangle. You have tables around the dance floor, so like a circle around the dance floor almost. And the DJ is about 50, 60 feet away, off to one side, off into a corner. When you do a floor plan, do you try to make the DJ close to the dance floor so that way he or she can read the room and have sound on a dance floor? That way they're not ramping the volume up really loud and blowing the eardrums out? Or do you say, hey, put them off in a corner because that's what a couple wants? Oh, I always tell them that the DJ needs to be close. I, I like to try to advocate for our vendors to be seated in the room during dinner as well. Um, there's some venues where it gets tricky or they don't want to pay for an extra centerpiece. Uh, but I'm all about making sure the vendors are in the room to see like what things are happening. Because I have encountered some DJs, they'll get the toast started, but the photographers in the next room still eating dinner. And that's something I don't want to happen. So I'm always that person like running around like, are you guys good? Are you guys good? When are we doing this? When are we doing this? And trying to collaborate with it all together. But yeah, I try to make sure the vendors are right there and where they need to be. And when I'm reaching out, I ask those types of questions like, okay, any requirements that I need to know about if they do need to have a certain space that they need to be seated at or anything like that. And that that's right there is one of the things that uh, I know us as DJs, I, we've been putting in corners a few times uh, for our business. Uh, Taylor, you've been putting corners? Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, you've been in a like, corner why? or two? Yeah. yeah. It's terrible. Jeff, you've been in a corner or two? Yeah, they put me under the stairs once. That was really just... <laughs> <laughs> Right it was like you. a set of stairs going up and they we're gonna have to put you there because we had more tables than we than we thought we were gonna have and we got to seat everybody you know so i'm like okay hey wherever you know yeah i get paid the same so you know i will go wherever you tell me to go <laughs> what about you brantley i've i i've had some corners and certain venues i'm at i actually prefer it uh one it, and it's because of how they book the room like celebrations on the river their big, their latest room uh, that they redid, which is the courtyard, that was originally a venue that was only meant to hold about a hundred people. So when they renovated the room, they actually kind of didn't really foresee how they were going to do it, and they just did it. And a wedding that was booked for the old room, which was you know the smaller room, got the big room at no additional cost with all the extra amenities that the room has. Unfortunately, and this is the reason I set up on an angle, I'm trying to take up more space so it doesn't look as empty. Because if you have a wedding that's in a 250 head room minimum, and you've only got 100 people there, it just looks empty. So if you notice, like in that one, and it's a lot of the pics I'll put up, I'm setting up fully spread out on my face and pushing up a lot. So I got like 20 feet behind me 
but in return, it makes everything look a little bit more closed in. But most venues, I do not want to be in the corner. And this is also why I call venue, you know, or top coordinator well before we've gotten anywhere close to day of for seating arrangement, floor plan, and all of that. Because, like, one of my biggest things, and I think 99% of the DJs are, you know, with me on this, I want to be right up on the dance floor. And it's not because I'm trying to be cocky or, you know, want to be seen. I want to see what their faces look like when they're dancing. Or if I play a song that some people are just kind of mad about, a quick glance on the floor when I do make my transition and move on is going to give me a real big key to like, okay, they're still dancing, but they don't like this. They love this. Quick mix and let go. And that's, you know, well, the only real requirement I have to, I try to put forward at any wedding I'm at, I want to be on top of the dance floor or as close as you can get me to, you know, not 20 tables away, mind you, but within a few feet. And more often than not, especially if you talk to everyone months in advance or it's somebody that we've worked with before, they're already going to know, hey, it's this DJ, he wants this, it's done. So that's, again, why I like going to my Golden 5 venues. They already know what's up. Just walk in, go to work, and everybody comes out happy. And and when you work with people like that, you know exactly what they're expecting from you and you know what expect from the venue. Mr. Dixon, have you been stuck in a corner or any stairs or in a basement somewhere that uh, you're away from the dance floor? Uh, yep. I just did a birthday party. It was um, just recently that was like that. And not only was I far away from the dance floor, it was a big pillar there. So really, oh. I'm like just basically DJing, and it was almost like DJing in my room, and think hoping that people are liking it. We had to. There was a facility in, uh, I think it was Dixon. We yeah. were behind a curtain. Behind a head table. So, so we yeah. couldn't see anything. Yep. <laughs> I would peek around. To see what was going on but yeah we were like the wizard of oz <laughs> so matt what about you have you been stuck in a corner somewhere of course we have that's the best part of djing <laughs> um, i i now have it in our contract that they're not to put us in a corner uh that we need to be close to the dance floor and uh, i have in parentheses that it's knowing that it's not always possible please consult us before you know deciding on placement because sometimes the couples book a big package that we can't do from a corner. I mean, I don't like DJing from a corner. Sound is not good. I don't want to push stuff way too hard. And I don't know. So I prefer not to be in the corner. I've done it. If they are forcing me to be in the corner, then I'll just charge them extra because it'll take longer and I'll run everything on the edges of the dance floor or like on the side of the sweetheart table and be in the corner. That's fine. But uh, I charge them a little extra for that because it takes longer to set all that up and run cables and etc but uh yeah and then i i mean our setup's pretty so what we do is if they set us up on the dance floor and they have something like cold sparks like our setup's gonna look good in the background of their photos but i also duck down behind the facade when they're doing their first dance so that way i'm not in their background of their photos um because lord knows i ain't paying for battery powered cold sparks when the battery packs cost three times the amount of the cold sparks so uh, so I'm not going to run cables all the way to the other side, but yeah. And Don't put me in a corner. Also, That's the worst place. One of the things also, a, a quick side note, uh, this weekend, we our wedding we did, we had uh, the facade up again that uh, we I bought uh, with uh, a company of Matt deals with. And if you're looking for a great facade, I'll tell you right now, get a hold of DJ Salsas, ask for one of those facades. They're worth every penny. They are easy to put together. This is our second time putting together. A yep. um, couple little tr uh, things you have to do, but it, it looks phenomenal. It does not look like anyone else's thing. And I, I just talked to Matt, uh, sent a message. I want to get more covers, including a rustic wood one. We have a couple of what a barn venues coming up for weddings. I think it will look great at. So really, I would recommend that highly. Um, and I got two our DJs I'm going to get to in just a second or two. DJ Fire has joined us. And I got uh, Tommy. Uh, got a quick question also from Fred. Uh, what kind of qualities do you look for in a DJ when deciding to add them to your preferred vendor list? 
So Danica, what do you look for when you look for a DJ? Because I know we're part of your preferred vendor list, uh, but what do you look for as a, uh, to add to the list? What do, you, what, do you, what do you want on that list? Yeah, first and foremost, I need to have worked with them. People do not end up on my list just because they emailed me. We have had experiences together. We, we have a rapport. I know how you do your business. Um, and I also seek people that whose values align with my values as well, because I attract a certain clientele and they want to deal with people that have my values. So I think those are my two biggest things. Um, the rest of it, I'm always looking for ways of how together with my preferred vendors, we can improve client experiences. So I always offer um, different perks for clients that are booking me through a vendor or a venue vendor, et cetera, or people like Tracy and Buddy who have created custom packages for our clients because it helps me sell myself too by saying I have these great vendor relationships. They love working with me so much that they created a package just for you. Um, so I'm always looking for vendors that are willing to do things like that. Um, because I think it helps both of us in the long run. But I'm all about people that are easy to work with and can communicate. And that's the one thing is that, uh, you know, we, we again, pride ourselves working with many different companies, but having a good relationship with someone uh, that you work with, uh, you know, every so often, uh, not every wedding can be worked with you and every wedding you can work with us, you know, there's great vendors. Again, hopefully work with DJ, DJ Brentley sometime soon in the not too distant future. Um but the thing is that it's always great having those, you know, relationships and friends that you could turn to and say, hey, you know what, um, th this is how we do things. And the one thing is that I always look at, you know, a clientele. I take care of a customer the same way I want to be taken care of. And Tracy feels the same way. You know, if someone wants something unique or something like that, we explain to them, we can do it, but it's we had to do this or that. So they understand what how we do things. The only thing is that, you know, like, Sometimes there are some customers that are, we don't do certain things. We explain to them we don't. You know, they want cold sparks or they want uh, CO2 cannons. If if Matt was my next door neighbor, I'd be like, hey, talk to Matt next door. Matt has that. I don't do that. But they look for something like that. I would then turn to a DJ that does that and give them another great DJ. Speaking of some great DJs, I have two more great DJs here. Tommy, I know uh, you got a chance to work this young lady next door to me. Uh, standing right, sitting right next to me, and uh, got to work with her before. But also, uh, you have a question for any of the coordinators for your Taylor, Tracy, or Danica, as far as uh, ask a coordinator your question. Uh, yeah, so a little bit earlier, you mentioned how, uh, like the last dance, uh, or like the private last dance has kind of become a bit of a trend as of lately. Uh, are there any other trends or commonalities that you're seeing like popping up at weddings a little bit more often? I'm seeing a lot more of the entertainment piece becoming more front and center. Um, I was just at an event the other week. They had this woman who was in a metal dress and her dress had like champagne flutes attached to it. And you just walked up and you plucked a champagne flute off of her dress. <laughs> like I, people are doing some interesting things to incorporate more guest experience. So I think that's where weddings are going. I've seen a lot more like caricature artists. I've seen people do trivia at their wedding. I have a lot of karaoke coming up this year during the wedding receptions. So I definitely see that entertainment piece being the next big thing. That's well, one thing we won't do. You won't do karaoke. Is <laughs> I've seen too many bad things. But the one thing I did see touch on that I just saw today um, a post on I want to say Instagram because uh, I on the gram and on Facebook and all the other social media sites um, a donkey that actually has on each side of it a pouch uh, with a tequila and glasses on top in ice. So a donkey walks around. It's an outdoor venue. It looks like California, if I remember correctly. But a donkey walks around. And the only thing I think about is, you know, a dog or a cat, you know, you could train them pretty well and they're housebroken, you know, especially dogs. You know, they go outside do their business. But often a donkey needs to go. What happens if it happens on the dance floor? You That, that right there, just to me, it's like in the middle of the dance floor and all of a sudden, you know, donkey is doing what a donkey does or other animal. But uh, I thought it was kind of cool, but yeah, they had uh, two uh, like baskets each side and the bottom. You basically you know pour your ear was either jungle juice was one of them, so adult jungle juice beverage, and the other side was a tequila um, 
and you could pour your little glass with they had tequila glasses on top so you can do your drink with that if you if you look back at my gig one of my gig logs from 2019 they had a tequila donkey so it might be there's a company that does that in the central coast and uh it was a hit everyone loved it and nacho uh, the I beer mean, burrow <laughs> i took a shot or two also nacho the beer burrow <laughs> Nacho de Beer Barrel. See, they got North Carolina. It's going to come here to Midwest. It's going to come here. Taylor, Danica, myself, and Tommy's got to deal with that. And, and, and Mr. Dixon. Because and well, Brentley probably has it already, but usually it's a person doing it and they're already drunk as well. They're just pretending they're a donkey. It's it's lacrosse. They just put <laughs> so, the shots in the cheese head, and that's where you grab them from. Yeah, there you go. You know, why not? You know. <laughs> um just show up with a Bears uh, jersey and make him really make him mad. <laughs> so, DJ Fire Nathan, welcome, welcome, welcome for beautiful Central Illinois. Uh, Hello. Man, the man has so many irons in the fire. I was why I didn't get a chance to watch your video you put up today uh, for your other channel for your landscaping business for the tree. I saw the the thumbnail for it. I'm like, I kept on trying to watch it, but I kept on getting torn away to do other things. So. Uh, I know you're busy with gigs and stuff like that. What is your question for Danica, the wedding coordinator? Uh, I guess I really don't have any questions. I just bounced in here to see what y'all were talking. Not nothing against you. Uh, you know, I'm just, um, I, I mean, I will say like, uh, a couple of the weddings I did last year, uh, the photographer, uh, and the wedding planner that was there. Um, we're like, can I put my stuff behind your booth? I was like, shouldn't you have your own place to put your stuff? But sure, why not? So, I mean, they would come over, like the photographer would come over there and reach under and like switch out lenses or get her video camera out. And then there was one where there was four, like the photographer had four people. Yeah, uh, so whoever she hired had two videographers and two photographers, so they would not miss anything. And these photographers were like, I meant right up in my way. Uh, I mean, I was like, come on, guys, um, wanting to put their stuff next to mine, like you know, places where I'm trying to walk and move around. I don't know if you've all seen that, but that's what we have here. I mean, I. I hate to be mean to them because I'm trying. It's, it's not my day. I'm there trying to make somebody's day nice. And if you know if someone strikes an attitude, then it, it becomes a problem, and I don't want to cause a problem at a wedding. They hired me to DJ their wedding. They didn't hire me to get the cops called to their wedding. <laughs> you know, so. Um, but, um, I don't think I've ever dealt with a wedding planner. You know, yet most of the people around here. I mean, we, we don't have the high-end people that want to pay several thousand dollars. Uh, you're, you're lucky to get $1,000 a wedding here. Um, you're lucky to get $500 for a school dance around here. Uh, there was actually uh, me, DJ Mike James, and one or two other DJs were contacted for our Charleston High School prom, which is at some sort of like auditorium thing at some old folks building. Like, come on, schools, like, treat you say you love your kids, but you don't want to spend money on making their prom, you know, all that great. Their parents dump money and, you know, pay for stuff. That's one thing that makes me mad um, is schools not wanting to make their kids, you know, our prom was amazing. We had ours at the uh, college up here when I was in school, and it was, I mean, they went all out. But um, so, like, there was... Uh, like I put in a bid, Mike put in a bid and the other lady put in a bid and I don't know who the other two bids were, but I think there were six, six bids all together. And, um, they gave the, the get bid to a, a lady that DJs for $150 or a hundred dollars an hour or something like that. And then come to find out she underbid it because it ended up being an overnight deal, like a rave or something afterwards. So it was like, you know, from like, seven to 10 and then it was from 10 to 5 a.m so she ended up doing all of that for 300 bucks because she ended up not bidding it right because they didn't tell her the right deals but i'm working on a video for dj fire channel i think y'all are gonna love uh it's just me venting about how i feel about 
DJ, there's, there's, and this goes to any business, not just DJ business, but um, when you go out to bid a job or you go out, someone contacts you to DJ their wedding and then they say, okay, well, we'll contact you back. Uh, we're, we're still getting other bids. In my heart, I'm like, they're not going to call back because they're not going to pay, you know, what I just quoted them. Uh, they want somebody that has, you know, they think they're getting a good deal. Like there was somebody just did a DJ um, here. And honestly, it looked like me, my very first time I DJ, like cables were dangling down. Um, nothing was cable tied. Nothing looked clean. I mean, had lights sitting on her booth, like, and shooting up at the ceiling. Like, I was like, what in the world is this? Like, that and was that's, me. Like, that's one of the things ago. you run into. You, re you run into, unfortunately, a lot. You run into DJ no skills and, you know, they're going to be they're going to be cheaper, and it is what it is. One thing, uh, Fred, the godson said, uh, that's an annoying thing about being uh, about you know being a team player. Sometimes you know vendors do uh, put stuff behind you. I don't have so much a problem as long as I know about it. But you know, I'm sure all of us here. I at least see a show of hands. How many times we had a photographer, videographer, insert vendor here want to put stuff by you, by your. Uh, behind you, behind your booth, behind your table, behind. Yeah, we've all had that. And most of the time, it's no big deal. We just want to know where it's at. Uh, you know, I always try to make sure I share power in case you need to charge something or, or power something. But I've had a wedding uh, last year that the uh, videographer just left her camera stands right in front of the booth, right in front of me, just literally yeah, right in front of me. And it's like, it's an annoying thing. And I, I just want to thank uh, Danica for being here. It's already been over an hour um, here tonight. And I want to thank you all for watching this evening, for having fun with us. I want to thank Tracy for coming in, being my special co-pilot here tonight. Uh, Hello, Tracy. And <laughs> I also am uh, missing Jordan tonight. Taylor have fly solo. I was hoping to have, you know, the, I was He's hoping to have all the You know what? Eyes. I actually heard him come home like 10 minutes ago. I hear footsteps and I can hear him bringing a suitcase in. So he's here. <laughs> And you'll oh, be pleased you to know beat him up now. You gotta say, "Hey, you should get on show." New Jordan yeah. or Taylor, you'll be pleased yeah. to know Jordan wouldn't succumb to any of my influence. Neither would my business partner. I was trying to get them both to be obnoxious and wrong, and they wouldn't do it. <laughs> oh man, uh, I had serious FOMO because I wish I was there. But next year. <laughs> well, we do have coming up for the Midwest. Again, uh, Midwest DJs Live is this week. But come up in June is Marquee. And that is actually like right across the, the expressway from Tracy's uh, regular office, her uh, full-time gig. Because uh, she gets to play with me on the, on the weekends and stuff like that, doing our stuff. I do this full-time. But, you know, it's one of the things she has her full-time job. And she's right across the expressway from where they're at uh, come up in June. So... Maybe I will put together something for everyone to meet. And I have my executive producer next to me nudging me because she wants uh, mommy to uh, go to bed soon because it's time for bed for them. Uh, they like to go to bed this time. So I want to thank you all for tonight for enjoying ourselves. And I hope you in, you know come back again. Uh, Danica, I would love to have you back here again uh, with another show. I'm sure a lot of people are asking questions down below. Uh, so usually I ask one of the group here to take us out, but because Tracy, I'm not doing that. Is, <laughs> <wait. Jeez. laughs> she told you talking you. to my phone all the time. <laughs> she, she this, is, this is the fun stuff. We you guys. I think, I think Buddy needs to take us out tonight. Come on, Buddy. Yeah, come on, Buddy. <laughs> take us out, all right, everyone. Fine. This is my wife won't take it, everyone out. I can hear her do it next time. Guys, thank you so much. See you next time in DJ Roundtable. All right.